Hey, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Horcrux here, and this is the level 100 Ishard PvP Sorcerer build for Diablo 4. Now, a little bit of disclaimer, this class is by no means meta. There are some other classes that are going to absolutely steamroll you, just walk circles around you. I, I, I mean that literally, not even figuratively. Like, the best way to counter the Ishard Sorcerer is unironically just to run around them in circles. Uh, yeah, so this class does have a lot of cons, which we will go over in this video, but it actually does have a lot of pros. You can handle 1v1s against other sorcerers, lightning variants, and flame variants as well. Uh, twisting Blades Roads is a little tricky to deal with, but as long as you have the Ice Armor aspect, you can deal with those. Necros, um, not even really a class, uh, to be honest. Um, now, however, I do have a friend, Lord Sara. I'll leave his channel and link down in the description. If you want a badass non-meta Necromancer PvP build, he is your guy. He actually makes it work. He's a very, very strong build. Go check him out. So while this build does struggle against the Hammer of the Ancients Barbs and also the Bulwark Druids, I do have a build specifically to counter that class build and playstyle. And here's a little teaser of it. It is the Arclash lightning source of pvp build. i will have this build released here in the next few days so if you want to be notified for that please hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified when that content goes live okay so without further ado guys let's hop into the video So I'm gonna keep this build a little bit shorter than the last one. If you guys have made it to level 100, you obviously know what's going on with the class. I'm gonna throw in some tips and tricks there. You know, what I kind of found along the way. You know, for example, uh, did you know, even though the forums and posts say that your crit damage is capped at 100%, no, it's actually capped at 200% critical strike damage. I tested this myself, even though every other source says it's capped at 100% or even 150. That's just uh, entirely not true. I've tested it myself. Also, you cannot crit against wards. If there is a ward or a barrier, your attacks just simply do not crit i tested this myself as well so uh, just you know the more you know now we do have dang near 100 critical chance on this build and i'm going to explain how we do that here so uh kind of taking a look at some of the gear uh, that we have here it's very important for us to have a very high max match pool um so for this particular build now i do not have the appropriate paragon board because i'm actually using my my lightning paragon board right now but if you can take a look at the link that i left down in the description for you it will have the paragon board to follow along and i will actually cover it i'll, I'll actually go to it in this video and show you guys kind of walk you through it in case you know you, you, you're not your max level like me so for example i'm still level 98 okay i still haven't done my uh, renown uh, i haven't grinded any of this out so i'm missing uh, another enchantment slot as well as um a, 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 a some of the bigger nodes so i'm not fully capped out but i feel like i do enough damage on this build and it's still really a lot of fun to play so um on the build that i have in the description though you will have around 147 mana that's very very important because when you come over to your skill trees um i have so much cost reduction on on this build that your eye shards and oh actually it, it, it's pretty cheap here i can show you guys here with the gear so instead of costing 30 mana it only costs 21 now the rule of thumb with this build how it is going to have to function you have to be able to cast two eye shards above 100 mana and then your third cast of eye shard will bring you below i think that is the most effective way to get the most bang for your buck out of the um, av avalanche key passive okay now so, again this is the lightning build i will refer to the the link in the description when we go over the uh the, the frosty boy build i don't have enough gold to reinvest right now at the time of making this video but uh that is the best way to proc your avalanche passive otherwise you're just gonna run out of mana and then you're not gonna be able to close out kills when you need it you're pretty much like a little gatling gun on this build so anyway uh let's go over uh, some of the gear here so um again i do have all the quote-unquote ideal traits in the description okay go check out the build all right uh, I'm just kind of go over uh, what aspects I have and why. Now, there are two different ways you can build this out. So you can, for example, if you want to run Raiment of the Infinite, um, a more aggressive play style and, and instead of tanky, um, you do not have to run a, a uh, the the, uh, the the snap freeze aspect so so the snap freeze aspect is going to give you two charges of nova if you're running raiment you do not need that aspect now if you do not want to run raiment okay i highly suggest that you run a disobedience aspect which is going to give you armor whenever you deal damage okay so if you want to go tank your build don't run raiment now raiment it does come in clutch. Um, the reason I'm even mentioning Raymond on this build is that uh, one of the enchantments we're using is teleport enchantment. This is phenomenal. This is essentially going to turn your dash into uh, your, your teleport. So any alteration or any alterations or anything that's going to 
uh, be affected by using teleport is also affected by your dodge okay so when we take a look at raiment when you use your teleport ability it's going to stun and pull people into you so each time you use your dodge to teleport quote unquote it, this is actually going to proc it and you're actually going to stun your opponent so this uh, gives you pretty much an infinite cc chain if your opponent's caught without unstoppable okay this is a really good way to just cc them and just kill them so i do prefer raiment um you do have to be very careful because on the boots you have to have max evade charges in order to pull this off you do have to use your teleports offensively and both defensively so you need to make sure you have some sources of unstoppable your oh shit buttons in case you do blink aggressively with your dodges to catch people cc them okay now you do have nova like i said it sucks relying on nova because what a lot of players will do if they get frozen by nova they immediately pop their defensive see uh, their defensive uh, unstoppable and now you can't see them you're screwed so the best way to like go about this build to line up burst is to blink in with your dodge not your actual teleport ability going through dodge to bait them into using their unstoppable after their unstoppable runs out you can either blink again or you can cast nova you know however your opponent is playing right so uh, i did go off a little bit of tangent there but it's kind of important for me to explain that if you're going to have success on this build and one more thing to note when you use raiment it pulls them all directly into you like literally inside your character model you cannot hit them if they do not move as soon as you pull them into you you have to sidestep just a little bit like like just a few pixels okay in order to land your eye shards because if they are literally inside you you cannot hit them so when you teleport you have to do a little bit of sidestep before you go on and pepper them with your little gatling gun frost shards okay so that is the strategy and all the aspects i'm gonna show you is kind of to just kind of coincide just just to enable those options to happen again if you run into the the hoda barbs have perma unstoppable and they have 13 brain cells just to spam one button over and over you're not gonna be able to do anything against them and i will have a build in a couple days to show you guys that it you can put that class down on the sorcerer but you can't do it with a frosty boy build it's just not possible okay I'm just kind of setting expectations so you guys aren't disappointed all right so Anyway, it's still fun. Don't get me wrong. I put, I put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in this one. Anyway, we had disobedience aspect, raiment, which we've already covered. Um, for your gauntlets, I do have this kind of mismatch. I do have it correct on the link. Um, so this aspect that we're using, core or mastery skills cast above 100 mana give you 40% critical chance. Okay, you want to have this on your amulet instead. I changed things around so many times. I just did not have an extra aspect left in the bank to change this around. You want this aspect to be on your amulet so you have a 60% crit chance. When you take a look at your magic pool and the actual build, you have 147 mana, which is more than enough to keep the uptime on this proc. Again, you can't crit wards. Just keep that in mind, all right? So got that aspect taken care of on your gauntlets you definitely want attack speed if you can get it and also critical chance ice shards an absolute must this is going to bolster your damage by like 30 percent on your ice shards by having the the uh, ring force so it, it's very advantageous to have now anywhere that i have dodge chance on this build i think it would be better to have max health i think max health is just by far the best way to go i played around with a lot of dodge chance i, I think on this build in particular i have like 25 percent dodge chance uh, which is pretty good, but sometimes it's unreliable. You still get one shot anyway by the Hoda Barb. So I do think having a high health pool just to make sure you live is better than relying on RNG chance from dodge, okay? So on on the, most of the gear that you can have damage reduction from burning as well as damage reduction from close, you definitely want that. Uh, if you're not running raiment, have that on your chest and then also have that on your pants. If it's not already obvious, you do need a lot of cooldown reduction. So you get cooldown um, reduction on your helmets. You get that on your offhand as well as your amulet so anywhere you can get that definitely slot it okay uh, again when we go over the boots the boots you need the max evade charges in order to make this build function properly movement speed is a must the frost nova if you're going to use the uh frost spike whatever aspect that gives you the the two charges of frost nova I, I, frost blitz there we go frost blitz um it is important to reduce the cooldown as much as possible because it does add like 30 to 40 percent extra duration to generating those charges of frost nova these really come in clutch when you have higher ranks of frost nova you get a lot better returns um, as a result so anyway uh, ranks to teleport is pretty important as well now arguably you can take off dodge chance again i played with a dodge chance variant of this build i would actually replace this with flame shield because having the extra like, like a third of a second extra flame shield duration is actually pretty clutch sometimes all right so when it comes to the weapon now this is 
this drives me absolutely crazy all the clips you've seen um, i did that without having the conceited aspect which is going to give you 25 percent more damage when you have a barrier i could not get one i farmed literally two days two days i could not get a conceited aspect so i had i was forced just to roll with the the ice shards i spec um, um aspect again the link has everything that is correct if you guys want to follow along so um this actually isn't that bad yeah you take a damage loss but uh, the problem with eye shards is that there's so many enemies you actually inadvertently like unless your opponent is like completely by themselves you end up hitting a bunch of ads and stuff which is really annoying so this aspect isn't the worst but replacing it for the conceited aspect which is again going to give you 25 percent more damage when you have a barrier active it's definitely not worth it in my opinion so you don't have that uh, on your weapon again make sure you have a wand a dagger gives you damage to close on the intrinsic tree you see this is 15 percent uh lucky hit chance okay be sure you have a wand not a dagger all right so the dagger gives you 20 percent extra damage to close uh, just keep that in mind before you're <laughs> you're investing all your resources into that okay so when it comes to the choker i do have a cooldown reduction mana cost reduction and then a rings devouring blaze and then ideally you will want to uh, reduce damage to close if you can get that the the devouring blaze passive does bolster your crit damage by quite a lot and since you have around a 90 to 100 percent crit chance on this build at any given time you get massive dividends from that now when it comes to jewelry you'll you'll pretty much always want the, the trifecta of vulnerable damage crit damage critical chance and then the fourth well, you'll want max health i don't have max health i mean it is what it is all right uh imprinted uh, you do need the uh, the prodigy's ring so whenever you use a cooldown you do get resources back unfortunately when you use your dodge ability your teleport you know enchant ability unfortunately this doesn't count as a cooldown i was hoping it did but uh i mean it's still okay you definitely need this for your sustain all right and then you want your circle of control ring so whenever you freeze someone and their uh, mobilizer stun okay you can stun on this build and then you can also freeze them uh, they take 35 percent increased damage so that's very important to have on your offhand i can't believe i don't have this slotted i've been running around with this <laughs> slotted the entire time but you will want the the um uh what's it called the, the stormwells uh, aspect which is going to give you increased vulnerability increase vulnerable damage while you have a barrier active you're always gonna have a barrier active anyway so on this one i did go with a mana cost reduction lucky hit chance could possibly be changed uh you don't need we we have a lot of lucky hit chance on the build i i think this might be overkill um to be honest with you guys so when it comes to uh, lucky hit chance uh this is uh, this will go up by 15 percent because i want the passage removed because this is using the skill tree from the arc build so we do have like like 55 percent lucky hit chance uh, which is pretty insane and then if you do have access if you want to play around with not using a, a just a, a normal you know aspect you know gloves you can play around with fist of fates if i can find them here and i haven't actually deleted them so so fist of fates um, is actually really interesting. I've not had a lot of time to really play test this. Um, but since we have such a high lucky hit chance, this might arguably be better. Um, yeah, the, the lucky hit procs are all okay, you know, chance of days, you know, yada yada. But if you run against, you know, unstoppable people, unstoppable, you know, builds, you know, like the Hoda, for example, um, this really, really isn't going to help you all that much. But the intrinsic perk where it says your attacks deal random amounts, deal 1% to 250% overall damage. I have a 250% roll. Unfortunately, I don't have a 300% roll. So, I mean, technically, on average, all of your hits are doing 125% extra damage. Now, it, 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 how's that trade off with the aspects from the frost shards? I mean, I, I don't really know. I said earlier that four ranks of frost shards will give you around 30% extra damage. So you gotta kind of weigh all that in. Plus you don't get the attack speed, you know, plus you don't get the crit chance. So all that kind of plays a factor. So if you have Fist of Fate and you have a really high lucky hit chance, um, it might actually be pretty good to try to run those. So you definitely want the, the most attack speed you can possibly have because your burst windows are very, very small. Yes, Ice Shards is not the best spammable. It, it is not it's not a very hard hitting ability at all but where the damage really comes from is if you can get your attack speed really really high during those short burst windows so that's what we did here that's why we're going with this aspect here on the amulet you know critical strikes the core abilities increase your attack speed by 38 percent again i think you should flip flop um this to uh, your gloves and then put your glove which is going to give you a crit chance to your amulet i think that would be arguably be better but you seem like you're pretty much a little gatling gun is actually pretty funny how cast you you how fast you cast things you're doing it like 50 percent faster so uh with uh, everything you know with your glove attack speed plus with the aspect uh, it, it's actually pretty crazy um you can do a lot of damage again if you can stun them if you can't stun them well you're kind of screwed okay and so hopping over into the actual skill build itself um you're going to put one point in the firebolt 
to max out frost shards and go uh, greater ice shards because your opponent's always going to be frozen because technically you have a barrier active so you get more damage from enemies technically being frozen from your passives uh down here okay so uh next you'll just uh, you don't have to put any points if you have a ranks to defensive on your amulet that is awesome but if you do not have a ranks to your defensive skills on your amulet you'll have to put a one point into ice armor you will go teleport enhanced teleport and shimmering teleport for the damage reduction every single time you use your dodge okay every single time you use your dodge you're gonna get that 30 percent damage mitigation so that's pretty cool and then you'll want flame shield since we don't have any healing on this build besides our potions you'll want to max this out to shimmering flame shield to restore 50 percent of your missing life Glass Cannon Passive, Elemental Attunement, you need your Precision Magic for your Lucky Hit Chance, you will want 3 Rings of Protection, you want Snap Freeze because it's pretty awesome when you get these freezes from afar, so the Unlucky Hits, Frost skills have a 9% chance to instantly freeze, so if you take a look at the Frost skill um, itself, um, this has an Intrinsic Lucky Hit Chance, um, it, doesn't, it says Lucky Hit Chance of 16%, but this is actually like 22%. So you're pretty much guaranteed a lucky hit chance proc um, every single time you cast ice shards because it has you know five projectiles you know five times you know 22 you know is, is 100 percent so you're pretty much always going to get a uh, lucky hit chance proc so pretty much like like every 10 times you cast this i mean th th that's with zero lucky hit chance uh, added to that since we have like 50 percent extra lucky hit chance you take that 22 you multiply it by 1.5 which is 33 so it, you have a one in three chance um, to, to proc snap freeze. I mean, the, the, the math is kind of annoying, but essentially what this boils down to, instead of um, every uh, one of every 10 casts, it's usually one or every cast of one of our every six, you'll get this freeze proc, um, which if your Nova is on cooldown and your opponent doesn't have unstoppable up, this is actually pretty good. All right, so you can get those really like clutch freezes just out of nowhere sometimes. Next, uh, you'll definitely want Devouring Blaze passive. We are running um, the enchantment. So when you go to your enchantments, be sure you have teleport as your enchantment as well as your firebolt because your firebolt is going to make everyone burn and then when we go over the paragon board you're going to get a lot of damage reduction from burning enemies as well as damage amplification to burning enemies all right um ultimate deep freeze is your oh shit button you go with a uh, supreme deep freeze uh, to reset your cooldowns essentially you'll take all of these passives and then you will want the avalanche key passive Okay, so the Paragon board I am very sold on. Now, if you find a way to min-max this even more so than what I have here, please let me know down in the comments. I'm sure that I missed something, but this is as close as to perfect as I could possibly get it. So um, for your first board, obviously your starting board with the enchantment that you want to use, we're gonna go with the uh, Destruction Glyph for that one. So your, your next board you want is your Frigid Fate. You'll obviously take uh, the enchantment slot. You'll run Tactician here, okay? Be sure you get your, your Weakness node as well as your uh, Chilling node as well on the way. Now down here in the bottom right corner, also get your Oppressive node just so you can get your Vulnerable damage, all right? To maximize your buckets as much as possible. The third board is Burning Instincts. We're gonna split this into a North and South, okay? So the uh, going, uh, we'll just kind of go down South uh, here. Uh, you want the exploiter glyph in this slot you definitely just pick up all your rare nodes as well you might as well when you're here and then you'll want to branch out to getting your your kindling nodes this is going to be your damage reduction versus enemies and elites technically players count as elites so having any passives that reduce or amplify the damage to elites is really good to have and then you'll want to go up north you know this is going to give your armor and also you know, your your reduction uh, from elites and such so we're gonna go up north this is going to be our fourth board which is enhancement mass enhancement master so for this one you will want to use control in the enchantment slot um, go over and grab the uh, elemental's rare node which is going to increase your non-physical damage as well as your health health is very important because every single time you use a cooldown you're going to get a, a shield that is 33 you know 30 percent of your health size so the more health you have the better and also again you cannot crit ward so uh, that's uh, very very handy and then go up north get this ruinous ru uh, ruinous uh, node here now if you are missing some of the stat points requirements on a lot of the gear you can get you get you can get uh, all stat rolls like for example on your gloves or your boots or your offhand if you're missing uh, some of these secondary effects and you need the stats just go with all stats um, you'll eventually you can run that on like two pieces of your gears and get pretty much every single passive that we have here all right so uh, next is going to be the fifth board so we're gonna go back down to the south of the uh, burning instincts board now go down south here um, it's very important to again have a high maximum mana pool so i actually branched off and grabbed these nodes here that's going to give you the extra life as well as um, the maximum magica again we have around 147 mana sorry for calling it magica i come from the elder scrolls online which we call it magica over there so it's mana over here all right 
and then you'll have just enough points to come down here to get your reinforced uh, glyph now reinforced is actually really good because this is going to give you uh damage mitigation while you have a very active there's really nothing else that does that and it's pretty easy to attain all right now uh last but certainly not least is your sixth board now this is where you're going to get your your crit damage you don't worry about getting the secondary effect on this so it's going to be searing heat is going to be your sixth board which is going to branch off of your enchantment master board to the east so you're literally just going to go straight over come right down to the enchantment slot which is going to be enchanter okay and then uh, you want to definitely go up and get your critical strike damage node. This is pretty much the only reason we're running this node. This does when it comes to maximizing your buckets with damage. This is definitely the way to go. Okay, that was a mouthful. That's what she said. Now, I tried to keep it shorter. I don't think I succeeded in keeping this view any shorter than the last one for that. Apologies. Um, I had a lot to say. I feel that most of the information that I provided was uh, pretty relevant. Okay, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the gameplay. I will be doing a PvP compilation here pretty soon, as well as getting the Lightning variant, the Arc Lash variant of this build out. Um, I'm much more confident in that build uh to just perform better better against the meta it just so happens like the, the meta that uh pvp is currently in it's pretty much just a bunch of one shot brain dead smooth brain hotards i mean i mean it is what it is you know if you can't beat them join them well the r clash build is going to allow you to beat them so uh, with all that being said guys i really appreciate you watching toward the end if you have any criticism any things i can prove on in videos going forward this is a new game for me and the audience is different so if you have expectations uh let me know down in the comments okay um, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons as well as my community members. You guys are absolutely amazing and apologies for not having a video out uh, for like the past week. I will uh, get back to producing content for you guys. And yeah, it's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. I had a lot of fun talking about this build. And uh, yeah, uh, come, come catch me on Twitch. I'm just rambling at this point. I do stream on Twitch, YouTube, as well as Kick. So uh, we'll, we will probably be doing nothing but PvP until the end of the season well, well the, the start of the first season which i think is july 20th uh, don't quote me on that which is like a week so it's gonna be nothing but pvp from here on out so if you guys want to catch all these builds in action you know what to do so uh again thanks for watching till the end i'll catch y'all on the next one peace <laughs>